Welcome to this iconic CNC training video. I'm your host Steve Stevenson and in this video we're going to look at another skill in ArtCam standard. This one is to how to import a 3D model. Uh, this is a pre-designed 3D model uh, imported into the software and create a machining tool path for it. Now um, it should be noted that ArtCam uh, standard does have 3D design functionality. In this video we won't be covering the design techniques to create your own 3D models. What we will be covering is importing a pre-designed 3D model. So first of all, I'm going to click on New Model, and I'm going to set up my material size. In this case, I'm going to set it up 12 inches by 12 inches. My resolution can range anywhere from 0 to 2,000 points. Uh, basically, it's going to determine the level of detail that our machining tool path will create. I find that about 1,000 by 1,000 points is, is pretty nice. It's going to give you very good detail. And uh, uh, if you go too far, um, sometimes it can be a bit of taxing, a bit taxing on your processor, on your computer because it's, it's, as you can see, it calculates a lot more information. If I run this all the way to the end, we go from a million points up to four million points. So we're just going to keep it at around a million points, or about a thousand by a thousand. Uh, we're going to use inches at our units, and we're setting our origin position in the top left corner on the iconic machine. The top left corner is your home position, so we're using that as our origin or our reference point. We're going to click OK. And there you can see our work our workspace. We're going to flip, flip ourselves over to the 2D view. I like to work in the 2D view using the 3D view, basically just for simulation purposes. Now, up here in this uh, row of icons, you're going to see an icon here called Relief Clip Art Library. If I click on it, you're going to see that there is several directories, each one of these having a bunch of different pre-designed 3D models. And some of these are absolutely spectacular. Um, these are all 3D models that someone has designed, and uh, they are available free of charge, and there's, um, I think, about 600 of them in the software. In addition to that, you can also purchase 3D models online through web websites like Vector Art 3D, Vector Clip 3D. Um, some of them are subscription-based. Some of them are just one-off uh, models. You can purchase a model, just one model at a time. So, um, in this case, we're just going to use one of the pre-designed 3D models that's in the Relief Clip Art Library. I'm going to use this crown. So, if I click on it, you're going to see that that crown shows up in the corner, and it's very tiny. But unlike a bitmap, vectors uh, are scalable without losing any of the detail. So, all the detail that you see in this 3D model is in there, and we can make this as large as we want, and it's not going to lose any of that detail. So, I'm going to make the width of this model, say, 9 inches. I've maintained my aspect ratio on the width and height, as you can see, so the height is going to change proportionally. But notice that the Z range is not linked to these. I could, by simply clicking on the Maintain Aspect Ratio button, link all three, or I could link none of them or just two of them. So in this case, I'm going to link the width and height and apply that. And I'm just going to hit F9 on my keyboard to center it. And then I'm going to set my Z range. Right now it's set at 60,000, so that's a bit light. I'm going to set it at a half an inch. So we're going to create a fairly deep profile for this 3D model, and uh, we're going to apply that. Now, last thing that we need to do is we need to come down here and paste it. But before we do that, there's one more thing that we always like to check. So you see we have two options up here at the top, Transform Options and Relief Clip Art Paste Options. When I click on this, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm adding this. Now, uh, what Add means is uh, basically if I was using two models, it's going to add one to the other. In other words, it's going to put one right on top of the other. Um, but in this case, we're only using one model, but add is still the appropriate selection to make. If we want to make this into a reverse, like a mold, for example, we could click subtract and it will actually take this, uh, this, it will machine this away and actually create an exact negative of our image. But in this case, we want to machine this as a positive. So we're going to click paste. Now, you don't see the image there. All you see is this basically a vector outline. If you look at the 3D view, you see there's our image. And if I rotate it, you can see that it has the depth that we asked it to have, which is a half inch. But you also notice there's no material thickness yet because we haven't established that. So let's go back to our 2D view. So now we can close our Relief Clip Art Library. We're done there. And I want to just grab our Draw Square or Draw Rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw a square around this crown and I'm going to hit F9 on my keyboard to center it. You'll see why I did that here in a second. So we're going to go to Toolpaths now. And uh, we've looked at 2D toolpathing uh, in a couple of the earlier videos. Now we're going to look at a 3D toolpath option. So you see we have an option here to create a machine relief toolpath. So I click on Create Machine Relief Toolpath and much like the other toolpathing functions, just kind of simply answer the questions. Now, 
You see the first option here is Area to Machine, and it gives us the option of Hole Relief. Essentially, if we select Hole Relief, it means it's going to machine this all the way to the outer edges of the material. So it's not going to concern itself with the fact that it's actually got to overlap this material in order to machine it all the way. So if we have clamps on this side, or perhaps a fence on that side, we could have some trouble there. So what I did was I drew this rectangle around our crown, and instead of selecting the Hole Relief, I'm going to select the selected vectors. So it's going to machine, as you can see, inside or outside is our option here. We're going to machine inside the selected vectors. In other words, it's going to machine inside this rectangle. It is going to ignore this area around it. So if I wanted to make this 12 by 12, what I might do is start with a piece of material, say 13 by 13, and create a 12 by 12 rectangle and then maybe trim it off after the fact. Uh, I'm going to go to my finishing options, and in this case, I'm going to use a 1 32nd tapered ball nose. So this is a, actually a tool that comes with the Iconic machine. So 1 32nd tapered ball nose. This has a five and a half degree half angle. So it's a very steep profile. Creates a very nice detailed 3D model. Now it does take a little bit longer because it's such a small tool. If you're looking to do um, larger models that don't have as much detail, you can get into a larger tool. But if you have a lot of fine detail, that 1 32nd bit is really the, it's the right tool to use. Now, what we haven't done in any project yet is we haven't looked at using a roughing tool. So in this case, we're going to use a roughing tool. I'm going to go down into our Iconic tools. I'm going to use a quarter inch up spiral end mill. Now, the reason I chose the up spiral instead of the down spiral is because an up spiral end mill will, is really more cr created to clear larger areas out, which is essentially what we're trying to do here. Down spiral end mills would be used for creating nice finished edges, essentially, if I was cutting a piece out. But in this case, we just want to hog out material, so the best tool to use is the up spiral end mill for that. It tends to throw the material out a little bit more efficiently, so it, it is able to machine just a little bit quicker than the down spiral is. And then we're going to scroll, scroll down to the very bottom, and we're going to define our material thickness. And in this case, we're going to make our material thickness 3 quarters of an inch, so our material size is 12 inches by 12 inches by 3 quarters. You also see in the options section, we have what's called the safe Z and the home XYZ. So I'm going to open that up for a second. So what this essentially means, the safe Z means that at the beginning, uh, or as the tool lifts out of each um, pass, so imagine you're cutting two letters and it finishes letter number one, lifts up and goes over to letter number two. It's going to lift up above the material right now 0.53 inches, which is a little bit more than we need. I'm going to make that to about 0.2. The home position is where it's going to go after it's uh, at the beginning of the machining operation and at the end. And so the home X, Y is typically zero. Um, we want it to go back to its origin position. And the home Z is set at about 0.2, same as the safe Z. Just need it slightly above the material, just so there's enough room to clear it, but it doesn't need to be any higher than that. We're going to click Calculate now. So as you can see, it's creating, first of all, the roughing tool path. So you see it's calculating area clearance. And then once it's done that, it's going to come back and it's going to calculate the finishing tool path. Now, as you, if you've seen calculating tool paths before, they tend to be a lot quicker than this. This is creating an enormous amount of code because of all those small incremental moves up and down. So now we're going to go to tool paths and we're going to simulate this project to see what it looks like. So you can see we're going to use a standard setting for simulation. So there's our simulation completed, and if we zoom in on it, using the roller on our mouse to zoom in, we can pan and move it around by using the left and right mouse buttons simultaneously. And then if we want to rotate it, we push the roller down and just turn our model ever so slightly. And as you can see, there's tremendous detail in this. So we've got some really nice machining detail in here, some nice contour and shape. So it's a pretty nice model. And this is one of the clip art images um, from the software. And then lastly, uh, we want to output this toolpath. So we want to click on toolpaths. We want to go to save toolpath. And as you'll see, there are two toolpaths listed, a quarter inch end mill for roughing, and then the 132nd tapered ball nose for finishing. Uh, if you're using an Iconic machine or any machine that recognizes multiple tool operations, then these can be saved as a single file. So let's call it crown. And we will save that. Now, if you're using any other machine that doesn't have the ability to recognize tool changes in its um, in its file, um, it's basically the post processor is not capable of calculating multiple tool operations. For example, the general iCarver, which we um, 
uh, have uh, many customers who own. Uh, it doesn't have the ability to create multiple tool um, operations in a single file. That doesn't mean you can't do it. This means we have to be a little more creative. So what we would do is we take this 132nd taper tool, we'd move it over to the left under calculated toolpaths. So now under toolpaths to save, all we have is a roughing tool. So in my case, I'd probably call this crown R or crown roughing and save it. And then I'd move this one over, bring this one back. And now I would call this maybe crown F or you could call it crown one and crown two or something like that and save that. Now you've got two completely different toolpaths, one for roughing, one for finishing, but they will work as one. So the roughing toolpath is going to clear all it can. The finishing toolpath is just going to come back and complete the operation. And then lastly, once we've done that, we want to go to iPicture. And in iPicture, it gives us the ability to convert a NC file, which is what we currently have, into a G file, which will activate the border function on our machine. So I'm going to go find my crown toolpath and uh, begin the analysis of the G code. Okay. G code's been analyzed. Okay. And we're going to save this as crown. And this would normally go straight to a flash drive. And we save it. And now we're ready to put that on the flash drive and machine that project. So that concludes the video on um, how to import a 3D model and create a machining toolpath in ArtCam standard.